Hey everyone, welcome back to Motion UX. Today we're gonna to be diving into Protopie, an amazing prototyping tool that instead of screen-based interactions, they are trigger-based interactions. And that allows for a whole new world of making really high fidelity prototypes. We'll take a look at how Figma prototypes and compare that to Protopie and see what is the best workflow in using Protopie. So let's dive in. So first off, I just wanna show the Protopie website just to give a brief overview of what this tool does. Just kind of like a typical design software. Um, but what's really special about it is if you see here, we can actually have a little bit more advanced type of interactions and prototyping here. So we can do multi-touch things, we can zoom in, we can integrate Lottie animations into it. We can also emulate some sort of like typing, some messaging back and forth. And fundamentally trigger-based interactions versus screen-based interactions really just changes the entire game. So let's dive into Figma and just compare the two. So here we are inside of Figma and we're gonna create a simple prototype just choosing a character in this like little tic-tac-toe um, game. And in order to do that, we switch over to the prototyping tab. We select on the thing that we wanna be our interaction and we do like a little click on click. We'll navigate to this next thing. Maybe we'll even do a smart animate to just see if that makes something nicer happen. Um, and boom, we have two screens now, one interaction. But say we wanted this to be a little bit more realistic of a prototype and we wanna be able to select any one of these options. In order to do that, we actually need to go ahead and we need to duplicate this screen and we need to say, okay, if we select the bear, it goes to this first screen, but if we select this monkey here, it's gonna to go to the second screen. And in this second screen, we actually need to change the design here. And so if we go ahead and copy the properties there and we select this to be 70% opacity and this is gonna be a um, hundred. Yep, this is gonna be a hundred and we duplicate this over to there. So now we have this being an option. So now for these two interactions, we now have three screens. And if we wanted to add this third one here, we would add a fourth screen to this interaction. And then we could also, of course, make this prototype this in between. So if I selected this one while I'm already having the monkey selected, we can go back and forth. We go ahead and preview this. You can see exactly how this happens. And Figma Smart Animate does its best attempt at animating things in between, but stroke widths don't really animate in Figma. Uh, and so we kind of have this like fade animation happening here. It feels okay. We get the idea across of how this interaction can happen. And then we can go ahead and hit that continue button. In order to create this simple interaction, we have to have three screens here. So now I'm gonna take this and jump into Protopie and show you how we can do it there and how much more we can do in Protopie. So here we are inside of Protopie and it looks similarly to a lot of UX design software, but let's just go through and see what all the things are. So. Right over here we have, we can import from Figma, Adobe XD and Sketch. I actually used a Figma plugin to basically just throw all of my designs from Figma over to uh, Protopie. We can import media here. We can do different shapes. So we can actually like design in Protopie. Don't necessarily recommend it because it's not Protopie's strength. We can do some text. We can do input fields, containers and we can also create components out of things as well. You can see we have a layers panel over here. We have scenes over here, which you could think of as pages inside of uh, Figma is kind of the same thing. Um, and then we have scenes over here. And since Protopie is a trigger-based prototyping tool, it's not screen-based like, like Figma is. When we look over here, we have these three screens and those represent all of our interaction. Protopie is trigger-based. And so each scene you can think of as one screen in your product or your app or your experience. And every time we go from one screen to another screen, that would be a new scene is how you can think of that. And so you could have like a home screen here. You could have like settings, uh, like the setting page in your app could be here. And that's how you can think about that. Then within our scene is all the layers that are actually contained in this specific screen uh, that we have. And then we can have components, we can have team libraries, public libraries, some things that have been created from uh, material uh, the Google team and things like that that you can kind of like pick from. And then the real magic of Protopie is over here where we have triggers. Without having anything selected, you can add any type of trigger that you want. And so say if we add a tap trigger, we can say if we tap um, group 57, I didn't do an amazing job of naming these because I didn't do it at all. If I tap this thing right here, then we can say 
all of these things can happen. And I just wanna show how do we replicate what we have in Figma here with less screens, um, less work, and also just like more interactivity and a higher out of higher fidelity. And so what we wanna do is we wanna say, hey, when we click this, it's going to kind of like highlight select and then dim all of these other things. And so to make it a little bit easier, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna name these layers. We're gonna name this bear, we're gonna name this monkey, monkey, and fox. So we got the bear, monkey, and fox. We have our call to action and then all this extra. So let's say that we wanna tap the bear and we want it to basically appear selected. So what we're going to do is we're gonna add a trigger to this. We're gonna say, when we tap the bear, we want the, we want the border and the color of that outline to change. And so we wanna actually select what do we want to be changing. And so we can go into here and we can select, it's gonna be this ellipse right here. And so in the bear, we have this ellipse group and then we can select it for here. In the bear, we have this ellipse group. And you'll notice if we actually go down in this layer panel and we look at this ellipse, currently like you can't do much with it. And that's because it has not made it a vector shape yet. And so what we can do is we can actually select make editable. Nothing has visually changed, but now we have uh, the ability to edit the width of this layer. We can edit the color of this layer and so on. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and change the color and the thickness. If we jump over here to our Figma, we can see this is the hex value that we're working with. We can come over here, we can do hashtag and that hex value. So we can see this is the color that it's going to be. And we can say that the width is going to be, I think we can just say like 30. And you can notice that nothing is actually happening because this tap trigger is not happening here. And we're just looking at kind of the static screen. And so what we wanna do is we wanna pull up the preview. And so if we click this preview right here, now this is the preview of all of the interactions and the triggers that are on this specific scene. And so if we go ahead and we tap this, you can see it actually animates the stroke and it changes the color as well. So we can go ahead and restart that. Let's make this a little bit bigger. If we and if we go ahead and we tap this again, you can see all of this happen. And so you can see that there was animation already applied to this. And so if we go back to our triggers, you can see that there's actually a timeline here. Um, we can see that we have this easing here and this duration, but we also have a visual representation of it here. And so if we actually want to change these at the same time, we can actually just click and drag this to say, hey, we want this to take a really long time. We want it to be really, really short. Right now, we just want this to maybe take maybe like 0.15 seconds. And in here, we can actually then edit these curves to make them custom, exactly what we want. And if you're working in a specific design system, you can actually like paste in your cubic Bezier values um, into here to make sure you're using the appropriate ones for your design system. And in here, we can actually do like a little bit of an overshoot if we wanted to. And so we're gonna see this thing speed up, overshoot, and then rest back into its final location. And so if we actually preview that, we can see that it kind of had that like brief overshoot. And so for us though, we are gonna go ahead and do command select, and we're gonna select this easing, and we're just gonna make it a nice enter. And if we preview that, really nice. So now we have that interaction. Basically, if you tap, this is what's going to happen. And what's nice about ProtoPie is now that we have this interaction, we can just go ahead and duplicate it and change what is actually the trigger. And so we want that to be monkey, and we can select this layer and we want it to affect the monkey ellipse. We wanna go down here and affect the monkey ellipse. And if we actually go to preview, you can see that it does not work the way we wanted it to. And that's because we need to make the monkey ellipse editable. And so now that we make it editable, we can go back into here to the preview and now it works just the same. So you can see now we're kind of repeating steps. We're doing this tap interaction twice. We would probably do it three times to get all of these three things. And so we're still not really saving that much time. And so that's where components really come in handy. And so if I actually make this bear thing a component, we can make this happen a little bit faster. And instead of actually making it the bare layer, we're gonna say the interaction is on the actual ellipse, okay? So now if we go to preview and we click on it, you can see nothing's happening. And it's because we this is a layer inside of this other layer and we have to say, make lower layers touchable. 
And we can do that again for here to make sure that, hey, anything behind this, we're gonna be able to interact with. And so now if we click it, it works the way that we wanted it to. And so now this ellipse right here does everything we want it to for all three of these layers. And so what we can do actually is create a component from this. So now this ellipse layer, if we take a look at it, has this interaction built into it. And so if we go back to our regular scene, we can see that that's our component and we can go ahead and we can preview and we can see that it works just the same that it did before. And we have this as our monkey stuff, so we don't need that anymore. And what we can actually do is just go ahead and duplicate this ellipse and move it over here to the monkey. And we can just visually move it over here as well. We can delete that other ellipse. We can do the same thing for the fox. We can delete the circle, move this guy all the way over here, making sure that it's in the fox group and in the back. And let's make sure that we actually select the monkey and fox and make the lower layers touchable. And also the group, the actual character illustration. And now when we come back in here, we can select all of these. Now this is where ProtoPy starts to get really powerful. So what we don't have here is the condition of, hey, if I select one, everything else grays out. And if I select another one, everything else is unselected and it grays out so that we don't have multiple things selected at the same time. And so now we need to embed a little bit of logic to our interaction to make it work this way. So now we have to use a little bit of logic to make everything else be deselected. And so what we wanna do is like, let's. Before we even touch anything, let's think through how logically this would happen. So if we select one, we want to inform everything else that this thing is selected and that everything else is kind of like deselected. So let's go do that. So if we go into this component here, we say when we tap, it changes the border, it changes the color, and we also want it to send this message saying selected. So to make this work, we want to make sure that we send to parent and that will send it to what this component is sitting within, which it's sitting within scene one. If we were to select send to current scene, it just sends it to this component area here, but we want it to be send to parent. And when we go back into the current scene, we wanna say there's a trigger. If I receive a message from a component that says selected, and we wanna make sure we select the right one, which is this one, let's go ahead and change it to bear and monkey fox. So if we received this, then we want to send not selected, or we can say disable. And we want to send that to the component of the monkey, and we want to send that to the component of the fox. Okay. So what just happened is that if we receive from the bear that it's selected, then we send something to the monkey and the fox that they're deselect. And if we go into our component, we want to add a trigger and then we're also receiving from parent this message disabled we want to actually change our border and our color back to what it was so we're going to change the width back to eight we're going to change the color to something like super gray and if we go back to here we're saying okay when we receive selected from bear we basically deselect or disable um, fox and monkey but we need to make sure that we do this for all of them so if we duplicate this and we say if we receive it from monkey we want to deselect bear and fox and if we receive it from uh fox we want to deselect the bear and and so now if we preview it we can select all of these things and everything else remains deselected and so the power of this here is that we've done all of this interactivity only on a single screen instead of having hundreds and hundreds of screens linked here in Figma. We're staying on one screen, so it's a lot cleaner. We're also getting a little bit of animation that we have a lot of control over the easing, the timing. Um, we can offset some things from happening. And all of that allows you to have a much higher fidelity interactive prototype. So with this small example, you can see how amazing ProtoPie can be as terms of interactivity and the high fidelity prototypes that you can create with this. What's amazing about this is that you can upload all of the work that you've done to a ProtoPie cloud and you can just share this link with anybody and they're able to see all of this interaction to the same fidelity on their phone, on their laptop. And so it makes testing your concepts a lot more powerful um, and a little bit easier than you can do in Figma, especially when we start getting into more intricate, advanced interactions some more conditional things. Uh, ProtoPie does things that Figma just simply can't. So that gives you a good idea of what ProtoPie is capable of and how it can really enhance the prototypes that you're creating. 
And as you can tell that it's not a full-fledged UX design software, it really focuses mostly on just prototyping. And so there isn't one tool that can really do it all. And so a lot of that designing and creating those static screens and thinking through the flows happens in Figma. And when we go to that high fidelity prototyping phase, we jump into ProtoPie and we start making those things there. So hopefully this gets you excited about this new tool and you jump in and start creating some things of your own. Catch y'all next time.